In this video, we're going to learn about for loops in Python. So a for loop in Python allows us to repeat the execution of a block of code for every element in a sequence. So sequences in Python are basically collections of items with an order. There are several built-in sequence types in Python. So strings, lists, and tuples are all sequences. So for example, if we have a list of countries, let's say USA and India and Canada, we can create a for loop that's going to run for each element in this list. We'll have here for country in countries, then we'll have colon and then print country. Now this block of code here is what's called the loop body. It's the block of code that's going to be repeatedly executed. We indent these statements to make them part of this block of code. We could have multiple statements here, but right now we only have one. Now this for loop is going to run for each element in this list. And each time it runs, country is going to be set to the next element in the list. We'll save our program and try it out. And we'll get here USA, India, and Canada. So the for loop is going to loop over the elements in the sequence in the same order in which they appear in the sequence. Now we could also create a for loop to work with other kinds of sequences. So for example, we could have here word is equal to friend. So here we have a string and we can create a for loop that's going to loop over each character in the string. We'll have here for letter in word. And this for loop is going to run for each letter in the word. And each time it does, letter is going to be set to that next letter. We'll have here print and then letter to put the letter. We'll save our program and try it out. And here we see that we output each letter in the string. Now a range is a type of sequence which allows us to represent a sequence of numbers. It's very common to see a range used with for loops in Python. So for example, we could have here for i in range 1, 11. So this range object here represents the sequence of integers from 1 up until, but not including, 11. So in other words, from 1 to 10. That means i is going to be set to each number in the sequence from 1 to 10. We'll have here print and then i to put i. We'll save our program and try it out. And we do get here the numbers from 1 to 10. Now, if we only pass a single integer to range here, that means the range is going to go from 0 up until, but not including, this integer. So here, we'll have i go from 0 up until 10. We'll save the program and try it out. And now we get the integers from 0 to 10. Now, the other type of loop in Python is called a while loop. We can achieve a similar effect using a while loop and what's called a counter variable. So we could have, for example, i is equal to 0, then while i is less than or equal to 10, then we'll have print i, and i is equal to i plus 1. Now here, this is also the loop body. The while loop is going to run so long as this condition is true. We start off i, the counter variable, at 0, and each time in the loop body, we increment i by 1. And then here, we check to make sure i is still less than or equal to 10. And the loop is going to stop when it no longer is. This is going to achieve the same effect as this. If we save the program and try it out, now we can see we have 0 to 10, and then 0 to 10 again. So we achieve a similar effect, but we can do it with less lines of code using a for loop. In general, it's a good idea to use a for loop when we want a block of code to execute a specific number of times. And it's a good idea to use a while loop when we want a block of code to execute so long as some condition is true. 
Now we can also have a range with a step. So for example, we could have here 4i in range and we'll have 5, 51, and then 5. So this third argument here is what's called the step. If we don't provide a step, the default step is going to be 1. So here, for example, we go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and so on, each time incrementing by 1. Whereas here, with a step of 5, we'll go from 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 and so on, up until 50. We could then here output i to confirm that. We'll have here print and then i. And we'll save our program and try it out. And now we get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. And we're stepping by 5 each time. Now a for loop body can have multiple statements. So for example, we might want to output the integers from 1 to 10 and also find their sum. So here, we'll have sum is equal to 0. Then we'll have for number in range 1 to 11. So this loop is going to run for the numbers from 1 to 10. What we'll do is each time output the number. We'll have here print number colon and then number to output the number. And we'll have sum is equal to sum plus number to sum the numbers. Then down here, we'll output the sum with print sum colon and sum. And if we save the program and run it, we do output the numbers from 1 to 10, and then we output their sum. So each time this loop runs, we take that number and add it to sum. And sum is initially 0. So by the time this loop is done, all of these numbers will have been added together. And then we get the sum of 55, which is correct. Now we can also have a loop within a loop. We call that a nested loop. Let's say we want to produce a multiplication table we could have here m is equal to 5. Then we'll have 4n in range 1 to 11. So n is going to go from 1 to 10 by 1. And each time the loop runs, we'll multiply m by n. So we'll have here print, we'll put m, then x for multiplication, n, and then is equal to, and we'll have m times n. So this is going to give us 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, and so on. We'll save the program and try it out. And we get 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, and so on. What we could do, though, is also increment m from 1 to 10. We'll do that. We'll put this loop inside another loop. We'll have here 4m in range, and we'll also have m go from 1 to 10. So we'll have 1, 11. Then we'll increment this loop. So this loop is nested inside this loop. So for m going from 1 up until 10, we'll do this work with n. We'll save the program and try it out. And now we can see we go from 1 to 2, to 3, and so on with m. So now we're getting 9 times 1, 9 times 2, and so on, and 10 times 1, and 10 times 2, and so on. We can use continue to skip over executing the remainder of a loop body. So, for example, if we had here 4i in range 1 to 11, and then print i, Again, this is going to output the integers from 1 to 10. We'll save the program and try it. And here we get the integers from 1 to 10. We could have here, though, if i is equal to 5, then continue. What this is going to do is when i is equal to 5, continue is going to skip over the rest of the loop body. So this print statement is not going to run. We'll try it. We'll save the program and run it. And now we get 1, 2, 3, 4, but then no 5. We get 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
And what happened there is that when i was equal to 5, continue caused the rest of the loop body to be skipped over, and i was never output. We can also use something called break to stop a for loop early. We'll have here for letter in the string water. And with each loop iteration, we'll put the letter. We'll have here print letter colon and then letter. And if we save the program and run it, we'll get each letter in the string. But we could use break to stop the for loop early. For example, maybe we want to check if the string contains the letter T. And if it does, there's no need to continue. We can just stop the loop. We'll do that. We'll have here if letter is equal to T. So if we found T, we'll put here T found, and then we'll use break to stop the loop. Because at this point, there's no point in continuing. We found T. We'll save the program and try it. And now we get W, A, and then T, and then T found, and the loop stops. Now we can also add an else block to our for loop, and the else block code is only going to run if the for loop does not end due to a break statement. So we could have here else colon and then print t not found. So this block of code is only going to execute if the loop doesn't stop due to a break statement. If we save the program now and try it, it's not going to execute because the loop does stop due to this break here. If we had a different word here, like for example, girl, this word does not contain T. So the for loop is never going to stop due to a break. If we save the program and try it, now we get T not found and the code in the else block did execute. Now for loop body is not allowed to be empty. So for example, we can't have for I in range one to 11 and then just have an empty body. If we save this and try to run it, we'll get an error here. We could have pass instead. So if we put pass here, this loop is not going to actually do any work, but the code will run without an error if we save the program and try it. Now there's no error. So pass could be useful as a temporary placeholder when programming, when we know we need to write the loop but we're not ready to write the loop body yet. So this is how we can use for loops in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.